They have almost twice the national rate of teen pregnancy, 27 per, per thousand females compared to 17 nationally. And almost twice the number of people in prison as the national average, 680 per 100,000 versus a national average of 419 per 100,000. But they think that solving these problems, which are the result of obviously 50 years of Republican rule in Louisiana, they think of solving these problems is going to be real easy. We'll <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> we'll just post the uh, Ten Commandments in all our schools, right? Jeff Landry says he's doing this. He's ordering this because if you respect the rule of law, you got to start from the original lawgiver, which was Moses. He even included a fake quote attributed to James Madison in his proclamation. Uh, this is complete BS, and it's designed to basically impose religious doctrine on impressionable young people. <clears throat> the Ten Commandments is arguably the most bizarre thing to choose to mandate. I mean, how about mandating that the Constitution of the United States be posted in every classroom? I could go along with that. But the Ten Commandments... Eight of the Ten Commandments have no parallel in American law. Eight out of ten. The only two that are the, uh, that are the same as American law are don't kill and don't steal. But we don't have a law that says that there's only one God and he must be worshipped and he's a man. We don't have a ban on graven images, you know, statues, crucif crucifixes, pictures of other deities. We don't have a law that requires us to take a, a, a Saturday off every week or be stoned to death. We don't have a law that says if children don't honor their parents, the community should get together and stone them to death. We don't have a law that makes it illegal for men to cover other men's wives, just sleep with unmarried women, <clears throat> Donald Trump. And we don't have a law that criminalizes telling lies, except under oath. I mean, corporations have recently asserted the explicit right to lie under the First Amendment, and Trump averaged a lie every three minutes in his last speech. So what's going on here? What's going on here is this is religious power trying to insert itself into the United States, trying to, trying to get federal subsidies, trying to get federal authority. Uh, I mean, this, and this is not what the founders said. I mean, there were some people in the early years of the republic, or even before it was a republic, who were, you know, evangelical Christians and were quite outspoken that they wanted religion in the Constitution. Patrick Henry is probably the most famous of them. He was the largest slave owner in the entire state of Virginia, which was a massive slave state. And he actively and vigorously opposed the U.S. Constitution, in part because it had a clause in it, the Establishment Clause, that says Congress shall not establish a religion. And there shall be no religious test for office. Uh, he was also concerned, Patrick Henry, that the Constitution didn't explicitly support slavery. But the actual founder, but he's not a founder of this country. He's just, you know, a famous guy because he said, give me liberty or give me death, as he was supervising the largest slave plantation in the entire state. But, you know, and, and you know, several of these people were slaveholders, Madison and Jefferson. John Adams wasn't. Um, Thomas Cooper wasn't, um, Benjamin Rush wasn't, but uh, you know, anyhow, here's, this is the author of the Declaration of Independence, the third president of the United States, the guy who wrote the first draft of the Bill of Rights, which says Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. That's Jefferson. In a letter, in an 1814 letter to Thomas Cooper, uh, he, he, write, he writes, uh, anybody who asserted that the, that the Ten Commandments were the basis of American or British law was mistakenly believing a document that was a manifest forgery. Why is that? Well, and, and Jefferson lays this all out. I won't read you the lengthy quotes, but they're all in the article today, and I also posted them over on Daily Kos. Um, uh, that basically, uh, the British common law started in the year 598, and, uh, and the Christians didn't take over England until the year 686. So uh, here then, Thomas Jefferson writes, was a space of 200 years during which the common law was in, in existence and Christianity no part of it. He says, he wrote, we might as well say that the Newtonian system of philosophy is a part of the common law as that the Christian religion is. In truth, the alliance between church and state in England has ever made their judges accomplices in the frauds of the clergy and even bolder than they are. 
so anyhow, I, I, in my article, I, I quote at some length uh, Jefferson's letters to John Adams, John Adams, who was a Christian and was not a slaveholder, uh, saying, you know, uh, hope springs eternal. Eight millions of Jews hope for a Messiah more powerful and glorious than Moses, David, or Solomon. Hundreds of millions of Muslims expect another prophet more powerful than Muhammad. Millions of Christians expect and hope for a millennium in which Jesus is to reign for a thousand years. The Hindus expect a, another and final incarnation of Vishnu. He says, but you and I, this is John Adams, the second president of the United States. He says, you and I hope for splendid improvements in human society and vast amelioration in the condition of mankind. Our faith may be supposed by more rational arguments than any of the former, which was the Ten Commandments. Um, the, the, uh, <clears throat> and then Jefferson just goes through this long thing. Ben Franklin, another one. Ben Franklin famously said, I found Christian, Christian dogma unintelligible early in life. I absented myself from Christian assemblies. That was in his autobiographical book, uh, uh, Toward the Mystery. Um, I think you know the most famous quote that the right-wingers like to use is where Jefferson said, um, I have sworn upon the altar of God eternal hostility uh, against every form of tyranny imposed upon the mind of man. Uh, but it comes from a letter in which he, he basically says that uh, the preachers, this was in 1800 when he was running for president, um, it was two months before the election, and uh, he, he writes in this letter, the, the returning good sense of our country, he's talking about the belief that he's going to get elected president, the good, returning good sense of our country threatens abortion to their hopes. Uh, he, you know, he said because uh, I, uh, the Episcopalians and the Congregationalists wanted an official form of Christianity and wanted them to be them. Because they, the preachers, believe that any portion confided to me, such as being elected president, will be exerted in opposition to their schemes. And they believe rightly, for I have sworn upon the altar of God eternal hostility against every form of tyranny imposed upon the mind of men. But this is all they have to fear from me, and enough too in their opinion." End quote. So there you go. Now, now this is going to go to the Supreme Court, where you know six Catholics are probably going to say it's okay. This is the Tom Hartman program. <laughs> the founders and framers are rolling over in their graves. I'll be right back. 